Born and raised in Memphis My sweet southern belle Like a cool drink of water You are On a midsummer's day I met Lauren when I was about five years old. Um, we actually went to Gal around Galveston. We went to the beach and um, we were on the ocean. And I remember, I actually remember her then and I had a crush on her uh, years ago. And, and I did um, all throughout the years because we would, we would travel from uh, Texas to Michigan and um, in that we would stop in Memphis, Tennessee. And that's when um, I would see Lauren every summer, once a summer. And um, I, I always had a little bit of a crush on her through the years. And, um, and then we went to Michigan and uh, we had moved to Michigan and we lost um, somewhat of touch through those years. So I think I was about 13 years old. So I had a crush until I was about 13 years old. And then a uh, number of years later, I, we were in college, or Lauren was in college, and um, I was dabbling with college. <laughs> but Lauren was in college, and um, she, uh, she, was, she had just broken off an engagement with somebody I knew, and, um, and I reached out to her, believe it or not, through MySpace, which I don't, I'm not even sure if that exists anymore. <laughs> but we reconnected through MySpace, and um, and that was it. I mean, three months after, I went down and visited her, and um, and I, I was completely taken, fell totally in love with her. I wasn't sure if I wanted to marry her at that time, but I knew that I was just crazy about her. And I spent uh, about nine months after that just pursuing her. And uh, pretty much the phone conversations were like, um, hey, I want to get serious, and her, her conversation, you know, the way she responded was, I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in a relationship. And I said, well, I'll just keep calling you and, and then you don't have to pick up and I'll know that you're not interested. But she kept picking up and we did that for about nine months. And, and then finally she admitted to me that she had fallen for me. And I think it was six months after that, that um, from we got engaged and, and then we got married. And um, marriage with Lauren was, it was complete bliss. I, uh, Lauren was and is the most incredible individual that, uh, that I've ever known. Not just, um, not just words, that's, that's the real deal. Lauren was the real deal. And um, I mean, Lauren continued to surprise me um, from the moment that we got married on. I mean, I remember... Uh, you know, we, we, when we were engaged, we argued a lot and we had a lot of, uh, just big blowout arguments and just over silly stuff. And, um, I remember the day after we got married, we were, we were headed down to our honeymoon and I was getting ready to explode again because that's what we did in our relationship. And I remember Lauren just didn't say anything. And, um, I don't know. I don't know if that was. I don't know if that was just the spirit of the Lord that spoke to her. Somebody who spoke some wisdom to her life. I'm not sure what it was, but Lauren went silent after that. So Lauren didn't say anything, and I, I turned to her, and I, and I just realized at that moment. I mean, it was different from the engagement to the marriage. Lauren was committed to the marriage. She was committed to having peace in her home. And I remember just the, it was like, you know, because most things are gradual in life. They take time. But for her, that moment when we got married, it was, it was, it was sanctified. It was holy. And she, she was in it. So, I mean, and then it just, you know, it continued. I mean, I remember, um, you know, Lauren, she's always, she was always so spontaneous. So even with our kids, it was like we had this plan that we were going to have children for five years. And uh, I think it was, I, it must have been two days after we got married. She just, she broke down crying one day. I said, what's going on? She said, I want kids so bad. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? We had a five-year plan. We had a five-year plan. But, um, 
but that's what Lauren wanted. So I fought it for about nine months, and then I gave in, and we had our first, first of four. And then um, from there, we had we we had two births at the hospital, and then she decided she was going to have two births at home in her living room. I thought she was crazy. We ended up having it, but that was kind of Lauren's life. She just um, she was. Uh, she was, <laughs> she just, she was, when she set her mind to something, she would do it. And I, um, as we got, you know, older, cause we were married for almost 10 years as the marriage progressed, she just became more and more of that person who would out of the blue, just say, I'm going to change everything about our marriage or our character or our children or whatever. And she would just do it. And I thought, nobody can do that, but she would do it all the time. And it consistently, I mean, especially in the latter years, just blew my mind. Her love for the Lord, her diligence, her just, her, she just, she would just put her mind to something and she was so stinking stubborn and there was no telling her not to do something. You know, there, there's a line in the song that, um, that says, and I'm still a dreamer because of you. And uh, that was specifically talking about how Lauren was so for me. Um, I mean, she was she was just so for me. Whatever my dreams were, she was for them, and including my music, which she was one of the biggest advocates for. Lauren herself was a musician. Uh, in fact, um, when we first, even prior to me. Um, being with Lauren, Lauren was on the worship team at college. She was in the worship team at school, leading worship at her youth group. She loved playing the guitar and singing. And I mean, that continued not so much the guitar, but she loved singing. That was kind of our thing. And, um, when we went to do the ministry over at Covenant, um, for the high school, uh, we, we led together. So I played the piano, she would lead a song and I would lead a song. Um, but, uh, I loved harmonizing with her. She, she was um, she was my harmonizer. We did a, most of the music I did was with Lauren. That was our thing. Um, and, and it continued. We we um, after we came moved to Dallas. We we started actually attending Covenant regularly, and um, we would co-lead um, over in McKinney um, together with another married couple. We co-led the the youth ministry there. And Lauren just, Lauren, she loved worship music, loved leading kids, loved leading. There wasn't a more um, intentional worship leader out there. She she threw it all on the, I mean, she laid it all out. Whatever she had, she poured everything out. She left nothing, you know, untouched as far as giving of herself um, to the Lord during worship. Lauren was very much defined by um, the goodness of God and the grace of God. She really understood the grace of God in her life. And um, when you understand that, it changes the core of who you are. Um, Lauren, the more and the, as the years went by, she grew deeper and deeper. Her roots just went deeper and deeper in the Lord. And she became this beautiful uh, woman of God who was so expressive in so many different ways. And I mean, you saw the overflow of the love of, of, of Jesus. And I, I can't, you can't define it any other way because um, nobody can be that good. <laughs> it's just impossible. And... Um, I know that uh, with her, the understanding that we all come to God through the grace of God, that you can't earn it, that it's freely given, um, that really changes who you are. And it changed who Lauren was. I mean, she just progressed and progressed into a better person because she understood, I'm not going to judge this person. I don't know where they came from. And, you know... It's only by the grace of God that I ever came to him and and became the person that I am today. She had this Bible study that she was involved in for a number of years. 
um, over at Fran Metzger's house and uh, they had a lot of the high school girls that were coming there just grew and grew and grew because um, she just poured into those girls along with Fran they just loved those girls and you saw those girls going from a rebellious state to trying to find their place in the Lord trying to uh, be established and grounded and just um, growing as individuals going from being these immature high school girls to uh, becoming more mature women in, in their ways of thinking and I know that um, even later after Lauren had stopped that ministry she continued to get people that would reach out to her even mothers that would say what can I do for I'll do anything for you because of the way you you help my daughter develop in that way you helped her mature you know and so um, Lauren was awesome in that way my marriage with Lauren was complete bliss um, you know every marriage is different and 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 every marriage goes through different things but one thing I never struggled with was I never lost my love for Lauren in the almost 10 years that I was married to her um, I was very very much completely in love with her and I mean it's hard it was hard not to be if you knew her if you met her you fell in love with her to some level whether it was friendship or whatever um, she was just so incredible and um, I mean the years were sweet 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 and um, we had you know develop been developing our ministry and music and at this time we had four kids and um, I had just recently landed a uh, pretty decent job um, building homes for a company so we were getting ahead financially and um, Lauren started to have some some back pain around that time and she was going to the chiropractor and they were dealing with it and um, anyways I remember one day you know cause she the back pain had was would be bad sometimes and and she'd go in and um, get chiropractic adjustments and and she'd be okay well one one day I was working and I got this call from Lauren she said I've fallen in the bathtub and I can't get up and I said okay well um, I'm coming but call an ambulance uh, I mean I'm 45 minutes away because I had worked about an hour away and I figured if I sped down the freeway I get there in about 45 minutes so I drove straight there and um, Lauren didn't call the ambulance yet but I, I got there and anyways I tried to pick her up I couldn't move her she was in a great deal of pain um, when I tried to move her and so we got the ambulance to come out and uh, went to the ER and she had done a biopsy a few weeks I think it was a few weeks prior just to see what was going on just to do some investigation and so that's when we found out um, when she was in the bathtub when I was on the way she got the call and they found out that uh, she had cancer and um, it was breast cancer so um, you know we were in the hospital and we're going back and forth and talking to all these doctors and we had this incredible oncologist who just had our back um, she just she was absolutely wonderful um, but uh, but we found out Lauren had stage 4 uh, breast cancer and uh, there was there was almost no medication that they could give her to alleviate that it was very serious uh, the diagnosis was serious everything was serious <laughs> but she was determined to get up on her feet again and so um, uh, there was a number of things that happened I mean just little miracles and wonderful things that the doctors did um, that oncologist that we had was so phenomenal um, she had uh, you know called all of her peers in the industry to get together she had a team together and um, they had uh, done some surgery to remove some of the um, parts of Lauren that would be causing the cancer and um, anyways she got her uh, on, a, on a pill form of, of chemotherapy and we were in the hospital for about a month um, and uh, and I mean Lauren's health just came back to her dramatically because what, what had happened was they found 
um, cancer that had spread from her breast all the way through into many many of the bones in her body and so that's where the pain was coming from it's uh, it's a little crazy because we were getting chiropractic adjustments and and she never had any serious breaks but she was having hairline fractures in her rib cage so I remember being in that hospital room and just the weight of some of the uncertainty and the seriousness um, it was extremely difficult but Lauren was so determined to just um, put some praise and worship music on and just worship the Lord and I mean in the midst of that kind of circumstance unless you've been there you can't you can't understand unless you're a young person um, that just got a death sentence you can't understand what it's like um, she was in the midst of that trial saying yet will I praise you I will still I'm still determined I'm so I so believe that you're a good God that um, in the midst of this I'm gonna praise you and um, I mean it blew me away it blew everybody away we've got videos of her um, just determined to live just determined to have life um, there was so much uncertainty nobody really knew anything but Lauren's like you know what forget it all I'm gonna live regardless and so we've actually got videos of her where she could um, she's barely walking to all of a sudden she's breaking out dancing down the, the hospital hallways <laughs> you know people clapping and they've got the music pumping and all that stuff and um, but that was Lauren she was just so full of life um, that was her so colorful everything about her so expressive and um, over the course of six weeks she went from not really being able to sleep or eat or anything hardly to um, actually pretty healthy she uh, um, she she just made a huge turnaround even the oncologist there was just blown away um, when Lauren walked in she walked in with a big smile on her face when she pulled up for her first um, um, I forgot what they call them but when you you, you leave your home and you go to an appointment out out of hospital appointment whatever that's called um, she uh, you know she was sitting there with a big smile on her face she jumped up on the table and crossed her legs and the oncologist couldn't believe it you know and so Lauren um, we had her ups and downs but every moment she sucked the life out of every moment I mean every moment she lived to the fullest every time she was with the kids she was with the kids you know every time she was um, laughing she was laughing hard it was just how she did things and um, we went from uh, you know from doom and gloom to uh, pretty hopeful because um, every time she would take a PET scan they would see that uh, the cancer was diminishing um, pretty 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 rapidly it, it happened pretty fast um, where I mean she was hit and then um, you know she went from it all over to, to in fact we went from one appointment where they they couldn't hardly see anything um, there was one microscopic spot left on her her bones in the PET scan that was it um, that they could tell but it was it was very much up and downs um, and, and anybody who's gone through cancer will tell you that it's highs and lows highs and lows and um, we got to the point where Lauren, um, her, uh, she was physically stronger. The cancer was reducing. Um, we had this huge family of people around us. Not just, not just family, but friends as well. Uh, church members over at Shoreline Dallas that just, um, and a couple other local churches that just, um, one in McKinney, that poured, poured out. I mean, we, when Lauren was sick, we didn't make a meal. Um, we didn't have to worry about our kids. Uh, somebody that we trusted always had them. Uh, she had a couple family members and I had some family members in Dallas and we were just wrapped in support. Um, right about that time uh, that Lauren had that diagnosis, Chase had started to GoFundMe. Uh, that GoFundMe uh, brought in a lot of money. and. Um, uh, 
cancer is very expensive, not just medically, but you know, if uh, we were trying alternative medicines, we were trying anything, and that essentially funded somebody being able to be in the house and and help us with the kids and and with the additional stuff. Uh, but very shortly after that, Chase uh, Chase was. Um, shot over in Austin, Texas, and that was her brother. And uh, that was my brother as well. I, uh, he lived with us for about four years before that. And that kind of blow um, was very difficult. Uh, not just for me, but, you know, Lauren, it was, I can't even imagine being diagnosed and then your brother all of a sudden uh, get shot and dies and um, that the level of just so he um, so Lauren had to be involved in that as well and I, I remember it was very painful but um, we had to be careful because she could only grieve so so much because we noticed whenever she would grieve the cancer would actually increase and so she was only allowed to grieve in portions and then I would have to help her I would try to get her mind off it or something to help her not have to grieve because when she wasn't grieving we would see you know her body would react in a positive way and so it was <laughs> it was very painful and um, but in all that in all of that in spite of all that Lauren still praised the Lord and um, she she would just not she would just not give up. In the midst of all that, Lauren decided that she was going to start journaling. And then the journaling progressed. She had always journaled, but she became more consistent during that time. And then um, from that, it progressed into blogging. And Lauren had written um, a handful of blogs. And just uh, even, even that took off. She had a lot of people that just started following her and... Um, I mean, it was very encouraging for people who were going through cancer or knew somebody who was going through cancer or somebody who was going through some pain to see somebody who would say, yeah, okay, this is, this is something I have to deal with. This is, this is, this is going to affect me, but um, God is still good, and uh, he's still full of love. And... Um, so we just we just charted that course, and I mean it was just we chose life, we chose life. And I remember so many times, even uh, Pastor Earl over at Shoreline Dallas. I remember one time we well this was right after she had come out of the hospital, and um, she's in the front row. It's the first Sunday she's able to be there, and the music kicks up, and the worship starts, <laughs> and Lauren's on her knees with her hands lifted high. Just worshiping the Lord and in the midst of that you know and um, she continued just to have that uh, surrender type of mentality but I'm not giving in this isn't going to take me I mean we tried every kind of diet that you can imagine she was faithful she was <laughs> she never cheated um, and uh, there's a lot of them I promise <laughs> they're all over the place <laughs> and um, and we just, we had so much help. And so we just, we, we rode the wave. Like, there's no other way to put it. It was, um, you know, uh, that's what it is. You just ride the wave. Um, there's good days and there's bad days. And on the good days, you, you take every ounce out of that day and, and you savor it. Um, whether it was with the kids or if it was a date night or if it was just a good day in general, you know. You just embrace that day, and um, and so we did. We every every day, every moment, we did. Lauren continued to do better in her health, and we decided we were going to move to Austin. Um, for whatever crazy reason, we felt like that was the right move. We went down there. We were going to start a ministry. I ended up getting a job with a company. Um, in a similar industry, building homes for a company, and loved the company. And uh, really sweet time. We uh, we went down there with some friends, uh, Rick and Lindsay, and uh, they had a ministry down there. We were wanting to take part of it. I know Lauren had uh, the ability to speak there a handful of times until her health 
really went south. She wasn't able to continue to do that, but she, um, whenever she was able to, she ministered. And then I was able to minister a little bit and go do some worship music ministry occasionally. Um, but her health, you know, I think it was about, I want to say it was five to six months into being in Austin, and her health further declined. And, um, and uh, we took some drastic measures, went off chemotherapy, went on to a strict diet uh, because the chemo had no longer been working. Um, they weren't sure what to do. They wanted to put her on a chemo regimen. And we just said, well, before we do that, we want to we wanna try all our options. So we tried to go all natural. Um, and Lauren did not cheat, but unfortunately, um, the cancer was very, very aggressive. She had a very aggressive kind of cancer. Um, and, uh, and it had spread to her liver. So we knew that uh, living in Austin without any family um, and not a lot of people that were able to support us, uh, just we weren't able to do it anymore. So we, uh, we made the hard decision, um, um, which was to move to Michigan. Uh, that's where my family lives and um, it was a hard move it was a it was a long move um, in fact I had to uh, I had to leave my job two weeks earlier I had given them six weeks notice but I, w I had to leave two weeks earlier than 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 even that because Lauren's health had s so declined that um, her parents which had moved to Austin even that wasn't enough help I had to be at the house with the kids, with her, it was 24-7 constant care, um, which she needed. So we moved to um, Michigan, and uh, uh, she got into the Henry Ford Hospitals, and she started chemotherapy. And again, um, uh, Lauren had had some wonderful oncologists. She had oncologists in Dallas. She had oncologists in Atlanta and now she had an oncologist in Detroit and they were all the top of their field. I mean, she had the best treatment. And, um, but Dr. Lutfi started her on chemotherapy. Um, you know, Lauren started losing her hair and uh, physically uh, she was not able to, ha she didn't have much energy at all. Her stomach became distended uh, like she was pregnant because her liver was so swollen. And, um, but again, even in the midst of that, Lauren, Lauren was determined to just praise the Lord. And I know they actually sent, um, they sent the, the hospital, um, pastor in there a number of times to just, uh, and, uh, all the, uh, people that want to do all the legal work for Lauren's going out and she's like, I'm not ready. Get out of the room. And I don't think it was for fear. It was just Lauren's like, I'm, I want to live every moment right now. And when it comes time, I'll deal with that. And so, you know, we started having these once a week prayer meetings and, um, here's Lauren, you know, stage four significant amount of pain. And yet she's trying to find people to pray for. Uh, there was, a another girl that Lauren had been hooked up with by my mom, um, just as friends, and uh, she led her to the Lord. And I remember that was like the the trophy for Lauren when she uh, she lived in Michigan. I mean, she was always, um, she's like, what can I do for you? You know, how can I help you out? How can I make your life easier? I'm like, Lauren, please stop. You, you, we can't. And I mean, it was constant. It was always like that. Even uh, every day she would go on Facebook and she would find people to uh, pray for her. She'd say, so-and-so is going through this. And and I, after about two weeks of it, I said, I can't take it. I mean, we, we have to get through this too. I mean, we can't always pray for other people. But Lauren, Lauren didn't have that attitude. She was like, well, I'm here, so I'm going to pour out. And um, so, so, I mean, again, it, it just continue to progress and um, you know we had some uh, 
some hard conversations uh, at the end we had to deal with some things um, and it became apparent that Lauren may not make it and um, it had progressed and progressed to the point where uh, it was obvious so Lauren set a date in her mind that Christmas she was going to be for the kids on Christmas that was her day and that's the day the Lord took her home it was Christmas but she was so determined to make it a a good Christmas so she bought all the presents and did all of that stuff before before she left One of the more unexpected things, it was actually at uh, Lauren's funeral that um, uh, they played when we went to Dallas, because there was two funerals, but when we went to Dallas, they played um, a song that me and Lauren had sung at Chase's funeral, her brother, uh, when he passed, and when I get to where I'm going. And uh, there was somebody in the crowd that heard the song and said, uh, and watched the video and said, man, that guy, I like his voice, um, really beautiful. Uh, I wonder if he has anything else. And so it was Lawrence family who heard that and said, yeah, he's got a lot of other things. So <clears throat> he reached out to me and um, said, can you send me a version of uh, Memphis Bell? And um, uh, there, there was a lot of mixed emotions at the time because when I first, um, you know, heard, hey, you should play Memphis Bell, which is which was a song that I had written on our fifth anniversary, I thought, I don't know if I'm ready for that, um, especially going through all that. But then I thought, what better way to commemorate and honor Lauren and her life? And so it's just one, one more way that I can say, Lauren, you were the most incredible person and tell the story of her colorful life. And, um, and so I did. And so I hope that you enjoy the song. Born and raised in Memphis My sweet southern bell Like a cool drink of water, you are on a midsummer's day. I can't wait to see what you do next. Oh, oh, oh. oh your life is full of vibrant colors. Your soul.
Oh